The story started at night in a city where people were busy in their life while some of them were chatting. Walking on the road as the cars were passing by in the city, there was a light that could be seen in a room turned on in a house. The room was in chaos as there were bottles thrown here and there on the floor along with waste thrown, and books were scattered on the floor. There was a bottle of wine with glass on the table with some books. Our protagonist Akina was happy that the funds that he saved would be used for his startup. He was joyful and felt it accomplished in the room watching the bank statement. He had been working at a corporate black company and felt like a slave to the job he was doing. After looking at his bank balance he felt like he could quit the job and start his own business. On the day when he was working felt like quitting the job at a sweatshop and was irritated at his irresponsible boss due to which he had to work overtime every day. Akina Shaoji was happy that he had saved money from his salary sufficient for starting his own store. This feeling of joy was unexplainable now that his life in this black company was over. However, he suddenly felt dizzy and thought this might be because he was awake all night at work. As this feeling of staying awake was usual as he gets before he faints and also he felt like he has shortened his lifespan. He hoped for the feeling of happiness after he got awake. But unlike what he thought, there was some noise calling him the hero, and Akina could hear as he was slowly waking up. Akina realized that he was currently in a weird royal court with a king and his knights. Akina was surrounded with knights and mages, and at first he felt like it was a dream but it was not. The King Ru of the Jin Kingdom filled in Akina with information that this was another world than the one he knew. Akina introduced himself with his name to the king. Then the king explained their problem that his country was battling demons for hundreds of years but their country was gradually outnumbered over time. As the king saw Shaoji Akina, he felt like the hero had arrived at the order and he had succeeded in finding the right one. The king asked him if he could help them with his strength. Even now Akina was feeling like this was his dream as he did not have any kind of power. The king told him that heroes usually receive special skills from God to know the skill he has to shout skill and open to see the skill. Still Akina was in a state of being in a dream as he was nervous looking at them. He was curious to know what kind of skills he possesses. He shouted skills open and to his surprise there opened a real status window before him. He started checking his name, gender and age. His special ability skill was cultivation. He had questioned that was it related to growing plants to his curiosity he continued to press more details on the window saying the skill to grow anything in the field. Just planting in the field would make it grow extremely fast was his skill to his surprise. He felt weird about himself and felt again that his dream was like a joke to him. The king asked Shaoji about his skill to which he replied cultivation through which we can grow anything easily and fast. The king was disappointed after he heard Shaoji say cultivation. As the other member in the courtroom suggested the king get rid of him as this skill was of no use to them and said they cannot afford to provide those people who cannot fight. Shaoji was surprised with his mouth open. There were suggestions about Shaoji that they wanted him to use him as a decoy. There were questions among the people around the king that was he suitable to be sent in the front line in a sedan chair. Some thought it would take some more time to order another hero. As Shaoji was hearing all the comments he said, what guys were up to. To which the king shouted silence to all the people around and said production skill was what we have used with folded hands to Shaoji Akina as they did not have enough food to eat and they should be able to utilize the skill. Shaoji Akina replied saying it was a nice play displayed by the master. The king ordered Shaoji to create food as he was provided with a vacant house and field at the edge of the royal capital. Shaoji felt like his dream needed to hurry up and he could wake up and start his business that he had planned for earlier and saved his money. Shaoji Akina was provided with a field at the edge of the royal capital as he started to cultivate as there were no living expenses for him. While producing food he was wondering if he had lived like this for a week. It was like a dream that was a week long. Shaoji Akina tried to grow the vegetables using his skills even though it was his dream considering he had the skill to cultivate. To his surprise he could harvest as the plant would grow in a few days felt like magic. Shaoji felt bored as he got used to the skill of cultivation and sat on the bench in the farm with his neck resting back and looking at the sky. In eight days his feeling of dream was now the reality, and not just the dream. For some time he felt like going to see his majesty king. As he met the king, the king asked Shaoji if everything was alright with him as he did not see him for a very long time to which Shaoji replied he was good and thanked the highness. The king asked about the vegetables that he brought that were cultivated using his skill and was surprised by the result as he could harvest in less than 10 days. He could solve the food shortage with his skill that our country was facing and all the extraordinary harvested crops would be purchased by us. Shaoji laughed and thought that the king was in a good mood and it was the right time to ask the question, for how long does he have to do this job? 
The king said what? And said till some other hero was appointed and asked what he meant by that to which Xiaoji said. If he could go back to his original world after another hero would get appointed. The king replied there was no way that he was allowed to return as he was the ordered hero to their original world. Did he not know that asked the king? To which Xiaoji was furious as he came back to the farm in his home he broke the bottle on the table after he drank the wine shouting he wanted to go back to his original world and was ordered here without his permission. Xiaoji was drinking and talking to him saying he was just an extraordinary hero who was just a farmer in the end. He has survived a black company and managed to save his money without inheriting his parents' property. After a few drinks he fell on the table with his head bowed down thinking he did not want to repeat his parents' failure. As his parents were primary producers, so-called farmers used to work day and night in the field and they did not have time to play with him. Xiaoji was happy exploring the field to which he was satisfied but that happiness ended one day. As his father was very anxious about the future as the price was rising so he attended a seminar with our neighbor which was about part-time work that could earn them extra income. To his surprise that seminar was a fraud run by some scammers, as there was so much debt that his father took for farming made him sick and he died very fast as he could not bear the burden of debt. Anyhow our debts were covered by the insurance company, and as we grew up, mother felt relieved but even she could not live long and she died. Watching all of the incidents made Xiaoji Akina decide not to choose his profession as a farmer and continue his parents' legacy as a farmer. He did not want to go the same path that their parents traveled. After all that happened Xiaoji Akina chooses to be a salaried man rather than a farmer. He wanted to choose a different career path. On his journey of working in the corporate world at a sweatshop he made it a point in his life that he would earn money and save it to have a comfortable and free life. It was also his personal interest to open his own business with the money that he has saved during this period of work at sweatshop. Xiaoji Akina was studying along with the work and was saving his money in desperation to get out of this job trap. Finally when the money got arranged for the startup business that he had planned for himself. As he was drinking in the pitcher he felt like he had deposited his money into another world. He had emptied all the pitchers filled with drinks on his table while having all the thoughts. As he was having his last drop of the drink he felt like he could get more alcohol with the skill that he possessed of cultivation. He had an idea that if he could plow and put the empty pitcher inside the ground. While having a laugh at his idea he plowed the ground wondering if he would grow the tree of booze by tomorrow morning. He said to grow many booze fruits for him. He shouted in the air and slept on the ground with anticipation that he would get the fruits as he planned. There came light thumping on his face to which he woke up and felt like his head was banging. Later he felt that might be because of his boozing that gave him the hangover as he had spent all his money on liquor. He was trying to find if there were any leftover vegetables that he had harvested earlier. But to his surprise as he saw in his farm there budded a tree that had booze-filed pitcher-like fruits. As he saw this tree full of booze pitchers, he fell to the ground in shock and asked himself how this booze tree bore fruit. As he has buried only one bottle in the field, feeling amazed by the skill of cultivation. He said to himself if he could grow the world's booze from a tree in one night as the tree grew for real. His doubt to confirm that if the tree was real he snapped the pitcher from the tree and had a thought that if this was possible to get liquor from the tree. He was shocked after he held the pitcher with the alcohol in his hand with the real crock and felt it as a strange world. He opened the cork and poured the drink in the glass, held it for a few minutes and drank it finally. To his surprise it was real alcohol and he felt he could cultivate his own alcohol along with the bottle and cork. He opened up his own store named Royal Capital Shopping District, Liquor Store. He welcomed everyone to buy his alcohol at his store as some customer approached him to buy the liquor. The customer felt that there was a lot of alcohol in the store. Xiaoji Akina replied that he got this liquor from someone who gifted him with free alcohol as he could not drink that much by himself. The customer replied if that was the case then can we open one bottle and confirm if this was real liquor to which Xiaoji Akina replied if she was willing to buy all the liquor if that was the real deal to which the customer agreed. They opened the bottle of liquor and tasted it and to the customer's surprise it was good liquor and wanted to pay 8 silver coins for all the bottles as the taste was not so bad. Xiaoji Akina felt he was getting silver coins for selling liquor at bargain price. Anyhow the cultivation skill made him sell liquor well. The customer offered him the silver coins and Xiaoji Akina asked him how they made this liquor as it was delicious in its own way. To which the customer replied that there were breweries that manufacture liquor and this world has a normal method of making liquor. Xiaoji Akina asked the customer if he knew anyone who was the owner of the skill shop. Customer said, skills, with questions in his mind and said he occasionally meets people with such skills so Xiaoji Akina felt there were other people who use their skills other than him. 
Xiaoji Akina said he was wondering if breweries also use skills in brewing like using the skill of farming for cultivating delicious grapes and making wine from them. Customer replied saying he hasn't heard many rumors about that but if Xiaoji Akina can consider his skill as fighting skill then he can earn money by becoming an adventurer. There was some kind of opinion among the people that farming skill was inconspicuous and useless to which he said it would be easier for him if that does not stand out. Xiaoji Akina left the customer and decided to buy high-selling items from others like sword and shield and cultivated them and felt them as good harvest for today. Xiaoji Akina could cultivate anything that he laid his hands on with his skill to check his capabilities. He also set a fence in his farm that that skill of cultivation that he possesses would not be exposed. He felt happy that his skill was real and he could grow anything even if that item doesn't have seeds. He can grow them by burying them in the ground, just like potatoes. He felt it was hard as it was like a cheating kind of skill to him as he was supposed to grow vegetables but explored so many options of cultivation. He would bury ripe fruit and he would grow the fruit itself in one night as he never thought that he would grow the fruit so quickly. The ultimate thought for the price was his thought to bury money and grow the money and he ultimately succeeded in doing so. Now Xiaoji Akina started growing his own money as he felt unbelievable about the skill that he possessed. Xiaoji Akina thought the king would also know about this skill very soon so he improvised his privacy fence and gave it a thought that this field would become dangerous soon so he had a thought of finding a regular customer to buy his products. If the king would know that he can grow not just the vegetables but anything that he could wish to grow, the king would definitely make him his slave and exploit him like his parents were exploited. He thought instead of becoming a slave he would use his power for his own happiness. He thought if he could grow sufficient amount of gold and go hiding so that idea would help him but he felt that he would get trapped by doing so. Other thought that was there in his mind was if he could use his power for building his own business as that was his goal from long time doing his work in his time and comfortably. Whenever he wanted he could work in his shop. After giving a thought on starting his own business he felt it was the right thing to do and started to look for a reliable partner and wanted to change his location with a thought that he would become another world trader first. On his journey to become a trader he had to pay merchants guide entrance fees with the cultivated money. Later he bought a new wagon and planned for mass inventory production and to gather funds for startup. He gathered everything and got ready with his final business model that included wagon, swords, alcohol etc. Finally he felt accomplished and he did not realize that he came that far in his dream of starting his own business. Shaoji Akina was recalling his past old days when he used to work for Black Company. After which he had enough money to start a business he was ordered to travel to other world with no chance of returning back to original world but to his satisfaction. Finally he was able to become traveling peddler and he shouted out of joy that he started his own business and felt like no one could exploit him from now onwards. He wanted to make the most out of his cultivation skill in the other world. The day commenced when he was about to inaugurate his business and start trading but there were some robbers on the main road. For his safety he hired an adventurer as his escort. Xiaoji Akina asked for a beautiful woman warrior or a witch who can defeat the enemy using their beautiful weapon. His escort who he hired thought that her job would be easy but she broke her weapon again as she was fighting the bandits. Xiaoji Akina felt that the escort he hired to protect him was strange as if it seemed like a business opportunity with her. He wondered. The escort that he hired was crying after she broke her weapon. Xiaoji Akina asked whether she knew for what reason her weapon was broken but she started sniffing sitting on the ground. He felt as if it all began with the weapon killer girl. After Shaoji Akina was ready with all his goods that he produced using his cultivation skill he was waiting for his adventure escorts. Some new escort greeted Mr. Shaoji Akina and introduced himself saying he was from Adventure Guild for his surprise and felt he could rely on him for his safety. Kyle, who was a warrior appointed for Shaoji's safety, was a spearman in Kaba who was the archer, introduced them to Shaoji Akina as he felt archers were usually hunters. Along with them they also accompanied one more warrior who was a pretty girl. The Shaoji asked the girl if the weapon that she was carrying was heavy and he asked her name. She said her name was Mayan and her job was to beat the enemies with the metal rod. Shaoji felt that it was a great way to fight and felt that the proverb that says don't judge a book by its cover might suit her. Kyle the spearman informed the girl Mayan that she had to be careful in handling the weapon and she was not supposed to break it and make every warrior feel down for her deed to which she agreed. Shaoji asked them to destroy her weapon but she did not want that weapon to be broken because it was a metal rod as her original rod was broken. Shaoji informed everyone that we all were leaving as a self-introduction was done and they left for the city place to trade. Shaoji after a while felt bored and thought to start a talk with the three adventurers that were accompanying him. Xiaoji asked them if they were a team from before they came together. 
with him to which they replied there was no way that they were a team along with the weapon killer. Main felt uneasy as she was called a weapon killer by their fellow mates. Xiaoji felt as if the cute girl could have a name like that. Kyle and Kava said to Xiaoji that as she keeps breaking the weapons so she was called a weapon killer. There came some big sound from some bandits who were very scared they asked them to give their money, and the girl. All the warriors decided to stand there so that they could stop the bandits from advancing further. Kava the archer ordered Kyle and Weapon Killer to kill anyone who would come closer, and he would pick them off. He told Mr. Shaoji to hide in the carriage under the hood and Shaoji locked himself inside the carriage and was watching all the fight from a small hole that was there in the carriage. The carriage that Shaoji made for his travel was custom made, so that it could become a simple shelter. He wondered if everyone was alright, or would get hurt if that would be the case then we will have to withdraw. He wanted to test his escort team ability. Kava started to fire his arrows towards the bandits and they started falling on the ground after Kava attacked the bandits with arrows. All the escort warriors started fighting in unity and felt strengthened after the arrows attack and felt if they could allow some bigger target for him to attack. Xiaoji saw that Kava has a lot of skill. Now it was Kyle who attacked the bandit who was approaching him and killed him in style. As Xiaoji was watching them fight he felt both Kyle and Kava were good at their job. Kyle said to Weapon Killer to go and fight the bandits to which she agreed as Xiaoji was watching her fight he had doubt about her style of fight that she was performing was armature, and the bandit got her movement and he felt this shot of her like tickle to him later to everyone's surprise she lifted that bandit in air and threw him to ground. Watching this movie of Weapon Killer Xiaoji, everyone started running back and leaving the battleground. Xiaoji felt the girl displayed an amazing fight. Weapon Killer was lying on the ground crying as the metal rod broke again. Xiaoji felt that it was the thick metal rod but it broke to his surprise, what kind of strength she would need to break that strong metal rod. Everyone agreed that her strength that was displayed was amazing and said she breaks her weapon every time. She was sobbing as she was called a weapon killer. Lane was given the sword this time to which she started singing. Xiaoji changed his mind and awarded the possessions to the one who killed the bandits. It was Main who was given the sword and was asked about the cost of the sword to which she replied about 200 gold coins. Xiaoji thought if he could cultivate the sword he could make profit out of it by selling it to her. Kyle asked her to sell the sword as it was a valuable weapon before she broke the sword. Main said she would never sell that sword nor break it. After everything settled they moved forward as it was like a small accident, and they were about to arrive soon. They were about to enter the town and they could see that busy market where everyone was busy doing their job. Xiaoji ordered all his escorts to do whatever they would like to do as he would pedal till tomorrow as he felt it was safe in the town without the escorts around him. The guards told Xiaoji that he was alright if they didn't guard him and they asked him about the payment if they didn't watch him and were on break. Xiaoji laughed at them and said he would give them full amount to which Kyle said he was happy about the gesture of the Xiaoji and said he was a generous employer to which Main also agreed and said even she had never felt this kind of treatment either. Kava was resting at the inn and Kyle was chasing after a woman as if it was another world. It seems like overnight with a slave. Xiaoji waved by to Kyle and Kava as he was about to start his trading. Main tapped the back of Xiaoji and reminded him that she was at the back of him so Xiaoji told her to lift some heavy crates. She shouted in pain for which he felt sorry for her but she did not feel that as a problem and lifted heavy crates. As Xiaoji has already spoken to the merchant guild yesterday as he decided to set his shop in the town's free market overnight, Main accompanied him for being his clerk and carrying goods for some extra income he hired her. She had superhuman strength as she was carrying heavy weights without any tiredness as they were arranging all the stuff to be sold Main found some cloth which was beautiful and smooth to her surprise she asked Xiaoji about the origin of the cloth and he explained that when he came from earth he had a handkerchief in his pocket as the quality of the cloth was different. He offered one cloth to Main to which she hesitated to take it from him and later accepted it and said thanks to Xiaoji as she hugged him. He was overwhelmed and said that it was a cheap thing that he brought from the supermarket. Everything was set up and Xiaoji was ready to sell, but he felt he got overexcited and cultivated it with all his skill in extreme ways for him to sell which was astonishing to watch, as he touched the stone it started glowing. Main appreciated him for the effort that he put into organizing different kinds of goods and did not believe that even so many goods were possible to stock and sell and asked him, how in the world did he manage to do so much? As customers were approaching to buy his products he had an observation that most of his customers were from the middle class. It was lively as it was full of customers around the stall. Mr. Xiaoji was trying to rearrange the order of his goods for better visibility of his customers. He kept the groceries in front and expensive clothes in the back. 
The main reason behind it was if something went stolen it would be only food rather than expensive products. Then main, understand the reason behind rearranging the products based on their price. Mr. Shaoji heard someone talking about unimportant matters in the crowd and went to them to get to know the customer. They said they hadn't seen this store before because it was the new store and they hadn't seen their faces earlier to which they replied and made good business for the day. Mr. Shaoji was overwhelmed with the response as he knelt on his knees and breathed. He prayed after he had sold his goods for the first day of his first business. The next day he started to sell his goods calling out to customers in the market shouting Akina Mobile Shop was open to trade. Please come by and have a look at our goods. Later after which Maine called the customers to his surprise there were more customers to her shout than him. Then they planned to sell all that he had piled up in excess for the day. As Maine and Xiaoji were standing behind the goods and calling their customers saying Akina's mobile shop was open. Some customers came along to buy their products that were grown and cultivated by using his skill. Xiaoji felt he would sell all the goods. As customers were approaching and inquiring about the products, they informed customers that they sell a diverse range of products like food, liquor, and also sell used clothes. Xiaoji thought that he actually had brought a little too much to be sold for the day. There came another customer who wanted to buy some veggies for which he offered two copper coins to the customer. But the customer said to Xiaoji that this was too cheap for the veggies. To his surprise he recalculated the price and confirmed the currency value of this world at the merchant's guild. Where one copper coin was equal to 100 yen in Japan. So 10 copper coins were equal to one silver coin here in this world and 10 silver coins is equal to one gold coin which was about 10,000 yen hence for vegetables 200 yen was reasonable to sell. Xiaoji forgot that he was in another world where there was a shortage of food and realized that he could sell the veggies at a higher price and corrected it to 8 copper coins. The customers were amazed at this price also as this price was still cheap to offer at this point where there was no food and compared the price with bowls store to which Xiaoji replied the price now was 4 times higher and still being called as cheap to which Xiaoji thought if he would have said price higher than they expected then there was possibility that he would have lowered the price and adjusted it to the market price. Some other customer inquired about dried meat price to which they said it was 30 copper coins which were also lower than the price of Zappa's store in the town and the customers felt that as a bargain store. So, all the customers at once gathered at the store. When they got to know the price of each product was very low they wanted to buy full crates and some customers were out of money so they went to get the money to buy more boxes of food. They could sell all the vegetables and meat that they brought and now they were selling liquor and fruits too. After a while when they could take some rest, they felt that customers became wild at the prices they offered as they could not believe it and felt relieved. There came a customer who heard that their store was a cheap vegetable shop. Later some women approached the store and asked them that if they sell meat that cheap as they were the housewives, but as all the food was sold out there were only used clothes left for the day so they inquired about the price for the used clothes. It was three gold coins that Xiaoji and Main decided to sell them to their customers. But no way had the customers realized that it was costly instead after a minute there came a wave of women stomping to buy clothes from this store. As Xiaoji was calculating the price of clothes back on earth it was 2,000 yen for quality old clothes. So Xiaoji decided to fix the price for clothes as three gold coins which should be enough to sell. There was demand for clothes in this world as there was no technology to sew clothes. This idea of selling clothes arrived in his mind when Xiaoji brought clothes to a thrift store in the royal capital. He also started cultivation of clothes and it grew tenfold. There was a lot of stock when they came to town to trade but all the food was sold out and they were left with only old clothes. Now as they opened the next crate they were amazed to see that it was also empty. Now all the products were sold out main and Xiaoji shouted with joy as everyone in the town beside their store were surprised that it was still morning hours and they ran out of their stock in the store. As the crowd of people approached them they told the customers that they would carry more goods next time and customers said they would save their money and would wait for their arrival. Main and Xiaoji said to all the customers that they will keep their word as the housewife's passion for bargains was amazing. After selling all the goods they traveled back to the royal capital from the market. Mr. Xiaoji expressed his joy to all his warriors as they all gathered and informed them that his first peddling trip was a great success. Main shouted with joy that this petting trip was indeed a great success, and it was amazing Mr. Xiaoji. It felt so light while going back as huge piles of goods were compliantly gone. All the warriors congratulated Mr. Sauji saying he was a great merchant in the meantime they reached the royal capital, 
and they did not face any bandits on their way back this time but to their surprise they faced bandits and they laughed at them as they were approaching them as they asked for the money and the girl. As they were getting ready to fight the bandits the main agreed to fight the bandits with her mithril sword as she wanted to show the power of the sword to them as everybody felt she became courageous from her timid self and also wanted to try her new weapon. As Kyle told her not to break the weapon, she said she was not the weapon killer. As bandits approached all the warriors fought their best as Mr. Sauji was watching them. When Main hit the bandit her sword did not break this time and she felt happy about it. And though the Mitral sword would endure the weapon killer, as she was not finished yet with bandits and ran against them to fight three of them this time with her sword and she succeeded in her fight with them as Mr. Sauji was watching her. He felt that her movements were different from yesterday. She went even further to kill the bands with her sword and broke the mitral sword to her disappointment. Kyle said to her that when she pushed her luck she broke the weapon. Weapon killer she was confident that her mitral sword won't break against anything but her strength was outrageous but bandits might have used the sword before extensively. She felt like it was a sheer waste of owning one sword like a mitral sword. As all the warriors were having a chat after they fought the bandit they felt there might be another mithril sword in the loot. They felt accomplished after fighting the bandits but Main felt lost as she broke the weapon again. And the guy's opinion on Main was low, Shaoji thought he knew the reason for their onion in her, and they reached royal capital. All the warriors thanked Mr. Shaoji for his kind treatment and told him to inform them if he has any more travel scheduled again, and they left the place. Shaoji thought Main should quit being an adventurer as has to compromise every time she fights and buying new weapons won't be enough no matter how many times she buys. Shaoji gave a thought about Main that if he could use his cultivation skill and make good use of her power, but he paused that thought for a while and thought he had to take care of his own first as nobody was sure when the kingdom would eliminate its useless hero and if they found out that the true power of his cultivation skill then they could exploit the power. Now that he had gathered some information he wanted to get out of the kingdom as soon as he was in the royal capital he could do his trading but as he moved out of the town there was danger from bandits. As Shaoji approached escorts Kyle and Kava for his personal safety they refused him saying they had another job to do. Later he went to an adventure guild once again when he planned to go for trading. The boss there held Main and warned her that she would become a slave weapon killer. As Shaoji entered the room the debt collector boss held the hands of Main and he heard the boss saying that he was going to enslave Main. He tried to get authority over boss and introduced him as Mr. Shaoji. Later Main explained that she was not able to pay the interest on her debt so she was planned to be taken away to which Shaoji laughed. The debt collector boss to whom Main has to pay the debt was the debt collector so Shaoji thought she could handle the situation on her own and Shuoji did not intervene but Shaoji asked her about how much she has to repay. To which she replied one gold coin per month to which four silver coins were the interest. The interest rates were as per other world law. Shaoji thought about her problem that if he pays for her debt then the root cause of the problem won't be solved so he refrained himself to pay her debt. Instead Shaoji told her that he would give her the mitral sword that she broke the other day for two gold coins. She agreed to the Shaoji's words and thought in that manner she would have some money with her to buy a new weapon and thanked Mr. Shaoji. He welcomed her for the favor that he offered her. Later the debt collector before leaving her gave warning to her that if she was not able to pay the debt then she would have to become his slave next time and left the place. Shaoji asked her if she wanted to be his slave and she laughed. They went to the cafeteria from there and sat there to talk and Main revealed that actually she had a skill called Superman. It was a skill that could increase physical ability. Shaoji thought that she had the skill too but it was a more heroic kind of skill than cultivation skill. So she continued saying that she could not control the skill so she ended up breaking the weapon before long. When the skill is active she also gets hurt due to which her defense system doesn't respond. So, she was scared to fight with bare hands and the monsters cannot be defeated with cheap weapons. For this reason she had to buy good quality durable weapons with debt but debt kept increasing while she repeatedly destroyed them using her skill. Thus she was called a weapon killer. She also tried to join the army to earn money but she broke weapons all the time during her training due to which her training partner was also in danger as her weapon kept on breaking and finally she was revoked from the training as she was becoming a hurdle to the team's progress. In the end she was told she would be a slave if she couldn't pay back that debt that is on her. Shaoji could not understand if her skill was good or bad as she had strong skill and said to her that only for that reason becoming a slave is not worth it. When Shaoji was on earth he told his story of being sailed to a black company where the boss was wasting Shaoji time not knowing his capability. He felt that the girl was talented with great power and it was unforgivable to those who could not understand her power, 
and utilize her special ability. Xiaoji planned to open his Akina store at Royal Capital Craftsman Street where he was dragging some good into a building with swords signboard as he entered it was hot in there and swords started firing at him and he shouted excuse me. I am customer sir to which he stopped attacking him with swords. Xiaoji thought he was shot by a man to which that man replied saying what is so unusual that he cannot be a dwarf. Xiaoji said as there were no dwarfs in his hometown. That man asked, are there countries of such kind existing? The small man smoking his cigar asked Xiaoji whether he wanted weapons or was it a repair. Xiaoji said as expected craftsmen like to work fast and he showed the dwarf man his big bag of swords that he brought and the man was all stuck watching them and asked whether they were mitral swords. Is they broken? Yes, Xiaoji replied and told him to remain unsurprised as these mitral swords were brought from Maine. He told him that he wanted him to repair one sword and remake various kinds of weapons with the rest of the swords. As he could not process mitral swords he left it to professionals like him. He asked the dwarf man if he could make him the best mitral sword better than the original one to which the dwarf man agreed to make it a lot better than the broken mitral sword but he informed that it would be expensive for 20 gold coins. Xiaoji agreed to the price and left the bag of swords until they got repaired with the dwarf man. Xiaoji paid the amount in full as advance and left the dwarf man in wonder as he said he would trust the blacksmith master of the dwarfs. The dwarf's name was Maud so Xiaoji introduced him to Maud. He liked Xiaoji and said he would finish the job with the best he could and Xiaoji left from there. He felt everything went well with him as he could convince the stubborn craftsman to do the job that he planned for and he also made sure he paid him well in advance for the work as he was professional at work like this. Xiaoji felt that there was no reward, no respect boss and business partner as it was hard to continue to be like them as he was protecting his core values but from now on he wanted to be a merchant of such a kind in this world to those people. Ten days later as he met Main, they felt it was too early to say it had been a long time. He informed her that he had a quest for her, to know more information he insisted on meeting her at his office. To her shock it felt like a private house rather than an office to which he agreed. Main asked Xiaoji if he wanted to violate her, so the quest was planned to tempt her as she was alone. Xiaoji replied to her that only man and woman who love each other can do that so she asked him the reason for her being alone with him. Then Xiaoji asked her as she felt nervous, if she was doing well with her adventure work, or did she buy a new weapon yet? She replied to him that the weapon that she brought with the money that he gave her was already broken. He asked her if she could be her full-time escort as she was stunned by Xiaoji's statement. Then he explained to her that he wanted to do business all around the world in future so he was in search of some trustworthy person to escort him full-time. She asked him with doubt whether he was sure that she wanted her as all the weapons that we use would break because of the skill. Xiaoji agreed to the condition of her breaking her weapons and showed her a lot of new weapons that were made with mithril, yes that's what Xiaoji said. She doubted him for keeping the mithril weapons in the shabby cabin as they were valuable weapons. As he showed her the weapons he asked her if she could escort him and use all these weapons as many as she wanted. Also, she can destroy them too, and the debt that Main would carry would be taken over by him, said Xiaoji. Main was shocked and felt it was too much that he has offered to her but he has conditions to follow like she has to accompany him as his escort while he was at work. Never go to any place without his permission and follow him no matter how dangerous the destination is she would have to carry on and salary would be 40 gold coins per month along with debt deduction little by little from the salary. Then he asked her about her debt that she had to pay. It was a thousand gold coins with the interest amount included. He said it was about 10 million yen in Japanese yen which is a horrendous amount to pay as her amount in debt. He said to her that let's pay the debt together at the time of the next payment so, she asked him whether he was very rich. Finally he asked her about her opinion of becoming his escort but she had doubts that why was he letting her break his weapon, and as he was paying her more than what was needed. As the cost of hiring was greater than the benefits that he had planned for her, he explained to her that he had high expectations about her skill that she possessed was Superman's skill which was a great skill. But as she did not have the opportunity to take advantage of that skill he offered her the opportunity to explore her skill as he wanted her ignored potential to blossom. As promised he would provide her with as many weapons as he can and said to her that he would procure a weapon that won't break even using her skill. She felt excited after she heard that news. Xiaoji asked her again if she wanted to work for a boss who would understand her and value her as it was a big deal but he sounded like a person who was a swindler. She asked him whether her power was really useful, to which he replied yes it is very useful indeed and she doesn't have to be sorry for being a weapon killer from now on as that nickname would be a reminiscence that she can talk about and laugh at. She bowed down to him and agreed that she wanted to become his subordinate and would want her to use her power. 
he gave freedom to her to do whatever she would like to do as she promised that she would escort him full-time and would fight along with him with all her might to protect him. In an unexpected turn of events, she found herself assuming the role of his full-time escort, a moment that stirred deep emotions within her. The realization that she now had a boss willing to not only settle her debts but also equip her with the necessary tools left her in a state of happiness. This newfound financial security seemed to forge an unbreakable bond between them, one that went beyond the professional realm. The arrangement went beyond a mere employer-employee dynamic. It became a symbiotic connection rooted in mutual need and understanding. Her gratitude towards him transformed into a profound admiration, creating a sense of loyalty that bound her to him. The promise of a stable future, both financially and professionally, served as the glue holding their partnership together that sealed their commitment toward each other and she became the full-time escort to him as she got emotional at that moment. She felt happy that she got a boss who would pay her debt and provide her the weapons so she won't be able to leave him as she felt admiration for him and they decided to work together for a white company as she told him to calm down a little. As the day began Xiaoji, Sen departed along with Main San to the neighborhood to do peddling. Xiaoji said he has officially hired Main as an exclusive escort for him. He felt the roads were less secure than before but she gave him the confidence that no matter who the enemies might be, she can defeat them. With her swords as Main was fully equipped with the swords he had cultivated. She felt happy to see so many mithril swords with her along with spare mithril swords in the carriage. There were sufficient weapons ready even if weapon breaks. These swords were remade by Maud and cultivated by him using cultivation skill. Main's favorite sword were cultivated more in number. As she was ready to fight anyone he felt scared and informed her to not say such dangerous things like that. He felt it would be better if we didn't get attacked at all even if we were fully equipped. Even if the security was bad they felt the bandits approach them. They recognized it was a monster watching it they were scared. He felt there might be monsters as if it was another world and it was scary to watch. These monster-like creatures were forest bears but they were very ferocious and hard-skinned monsters. They could see that these monsters had already attacked other people already and it was difficult for them to escape them at that speed. Xiaoji felt Main was a reliable escort to him as she was ready to exterminate the monster with the weapon that she had so she jumped out of the cart with full confidence and told him to leave that fight to her. As he had placed his trust in Maine and had instructed her to showcase her evolution the bear monster roared menacingly. She boldly charged at it but unfortunately slipped in the process. Her movements were noticeably distinct from her previous attempts, possibly due to the newfound confidence in her evolving skills. Engaging in combat with the monster, Maine exhibited a transformed approach. It was evident that her confidence played a significant role in her actions. While others without her level of skill might have managed to inflict minor wounds, Maine's attacks were executed with superhuman precision, characteristic of a young girl possessing extraordinary abilities. During the confrontation, Maine didn't merely pass by the monster. Instead, she skillfully slashed at it before swiftly moving past. The observer couldn't help but notice the complete contrast from her earlier encounters and now. Maine's attacks, driven by newfound self-assurance, proved to be exceptionally effective. Even when facing a growling monster, she managed to skillfully slit through its defenses. Although her weapon eventually broke under the strain, Maine promptly retrieved a backup, demonstrating her ability to adapt and continue the fight against other monsters. The transformation in Maine was profound. In the past, her attacks were marked by anxiety, resulting in the repeated breaking of weapons. Each shattered sword intensified her sense of offense. However, in the present scenario, he noted a remarkable change. Maine's composure, coupled with her refined skills, allowed her to dispatch monsters efficiently, presenting her as an entirely different person on the battlefield. Xiaoji couldn't help but reflect on the journey of growth as Maine had undergone from a fighter who would nervously break weapons had evolved into a formidable force. The newfound skill set, combined with an unwavering confidence, painted a vivid picture of Maine's transformation. It was not merely about physical prowess but also a manifestation of her mental resilience. As the battle unfolded, Maine's prowess became even more apparent. Her attacks were not only precise but also strategic. She seamlessly transitioned between offensive and defensive maneuvers, showcasing a level of mastery that was previously unseen. He pondered on the origin of this transformation as it was a result of rigorous training, a sudden surge of inner strength, or a combination of both. The broken weapons scattered around the battlefield served as a reminder of Maine's past struggles. Yet, with each broken piece, it was evident that she had learned and adapted, as Xiaoji couldn't help her but marvel at the resilience and determination displayed by Maine. In the heat of the battle, as Maine faced one monster after another, her evolution became increasingly apparent. 
The once anxious fighter now moved with grace and purpose. It was not just about defeating the monsters, it was a testament to Maine's growth as an individual. The observer could sense a transformation not only in her physical abilities, but also in her mindset. The monsters, once imposing and seemingly invincible, now found a formidable adversary in Maine. Her attacks were swift and calculated, leaving no room for the monsters to counteract effectively. It was as if Maine had unlocked a hidden reservoir of strength and skill, surprising even those who had placed their trust in her. As the battle reached its climax, Maine stood victorious amidst the defeated monsters. The observer couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and amazement at the transformation witnessed. Maine had not only conquered the external challenges posed by the monsters but had also triumphed over her own inner struggles. In retrospect, Xiaoji mused over the significance of trust and evolution of her. Maine's journey was a testament to the transformative power of belief and perseverance. The once anxious fighter had emerged as a skilled warrior, capable of facing formidable adversaries with confidence and determination. The evolution was not just a physical one, it was a journey of self-discovery and empowerment. As the battlefield quietened and the echoes of the battle faded away, Maine stood tall, a symbol of growth and resilience. He couldn't help but feel grateful for having witnessed such a remarkable evolution, a journey that turned a girl with self-doubt into a warrior with unwavering confidence and skill. However, now that she had sufficient weapons, she did not get scared of breaking the weapon. Xiaoji kept supplying the weapons no matter how many times she broke. Now she was not afraid of any such kind of fight. He said to Maine that on earth it would take a cannon to exterminate it but his matchless she killed them against a single sword. Now he sensed the real reason for the king and his group wants a hero with fighting skills. Actually Maine might have been useful on the battlefield using these skills as people of the kingdom did not have wealth and wisdom to use Maine's hundred percent powers. She defeated all the monsters and shouted that Xiao Ji San was finished. He asked her about the feeling when she was fighting the monster bears and she said it was wonderful. She felt like it was her dream to fight without thinking about the weapon breaking and said to him that she would definitely protect him Xiaoji said. He felt happy for sponsoring her to make use of her skill to the full, and they traveled feeling they had started it off well and continued forward. After a month on a certain day after she was recruited they visited the office of the lone shark Gordicito. They came to this place to borrow money for Maine so that he could take the debt over him. The place where Golded's Loan Shark Company office was located. It was a narrow way to the capital where Maine was indebted. She asked him if paying a debt of thousand gold coins was okay for him. Sauji thought she was anxious to know if the payment would be paid in full as the amount compared to Earth would be a huge sum of 10 million yen. Without any doubt he agreed to pay her debt in full and would want her to get freedom from this debt. She felt sorry for doubting him so he said to her to not make any apologetic face like a sad puppy. And when they entered the office she said even if she would have to give her life to protect Xiaoji she would happily accept it. As they entered the office there were people smoking with dangerous faces. He confirmed that these people were debt collection professionals. They asked Xiaoji and Maine what they wanted from them and why they were here at this place. Xiaoji felt that he had forgotten to conduct himself in the service industry, upon which a person among them recognized Maine as he looked closer to her. The collection boss thought, as she could not pay her debt she came to become safe to him and as she was indebted all this time she felt weak before them. Xiaoji boosted up Maine's feeling as she was feeling low. He informed all the people there that they were there to pay Maine's debt. All the debt collectors were surprised as they were supposed to pay a thousand gold coins. They asked them if she had become a noble mistress as the boss would be mad at this news. Maine felt strange about them as they were saying that the boss would get mad if they pay the debt in full. There was so much noise around as the boss was coming. Boss stood in front of Maine and asked her if she would be willing to become his slave. That's when Xiaoji saw the boss of Golded Loan Shark Company. Boss informed Maine that she would be used in a gentle manner so she doesn't have to worry about being his slave. Boss came close to her and whispered in her ears again that he would be gentle with her. Both the boss and Xiaoji shook their hands and greeted each other as the boss of the company tried to scare Xiaoji, and he asked him why he was accompanying Maine. Xiaoji felt scared but he did not show his fearful expression on his face. He kept a smiley face all the time as this expression was expected from the boss of the company. Boss also told Xiaoji that he would like to be the wonderful man to him who thinks he was protecting Maine. Xiaoji thought it would be okay if something wrong happened Maine would take care of the situation. Even if he tries to say something to the boss that won't suit him, Xiaoji explained the real matter and said to the boss that he was her employer, as she was suffering greatly due to her debt. She joined me in my work. Boss said that he was a very kind employee but the debt she owed was a thousand gold coins for which no noble person would agree to pay so much freely. Xiaoji said he would pay it all in his reply. 
The boss was in awe as he was mixing his drink. He asked him again whether he was being serious about paying the debt. Xiaoji said he was serious about paying the debt of thousand gold coins that Main was indebted to all these years. The boss knew that Main had the Superman skill so he said to Xiaoji that was he after her skill. As he was out of luck, said the boss, as the skill that she has got makes her so strong that she breaks all the weapons. So she was useless but still Xiaoji was trying to pay for her. As the boss was resting on the sofa, Xiaoji agreed again that he would pay all her debts. Xiaoji said to Main that he knew all about the golded sand and said he also knew about the problem with Main's skill. To his response he knew he felt the intent of killing unique to dangerous customers. Now that these people knew that he was going to pay Main's debts they showed their true colors right after he told them as Xiaoji thought if the payment was made why were these people worried? If Main was useless why would they lend her money? As they knew she obviously could not repay the money. What was the reason for useless skills that would trouble them? Xiaoji tried to understand the boss of the company as wanted to use her gently in the beginning when they came to see him but he thinks she was useless as well. As the plan of the boss was to use her for himself without letting others know about how to use her true skill. So to understand the boss's intention was to enslave her from the beginning by putting her in debt and abusing her skill. As she was exploited by private soldiers with great power and violent work, she was not recognized for her great skill. She expected this kind of trap she was getting into even before. Xiaoji said to Main that he would not hand her to them and considered her as a cute employee. The boss said now the debt payable was 1500 gold coins over her and he informed him that his subordinates told it was 1000 gold coins. The boss said they calculated the interest wrong so now the debt was 1500 gold coins. He asked his subordinate, wasn't that right? So everyone now said it was 1500 gold coins. Main said that was not fair on their part to increase the amount. Boss said it was all because of the interest that piled up all these years until now and said that was a considerable amount to pay for her debt. He said to her that she could calculate the interest on her own and check how much amount got accumulated. Both Main and Xiaoji got furious at him. Boss of the debt company also informed me that in the medieval world only a few of the wealthy had accounting knowledge here. It is impossible for Main to calculate her debt herself hence Main cannot confirm her debt that she has so golded company decides the amount payable. Xiaoji was already with the amount that the boss had asked for and placed it in front of the boss and told him to count them and confirm the amount for him. To the boss's surprise when he saw 1500 gold coins before him, Xiaoji also told him to count and left them. After they arrived home and sat at the dining table and having their supper they felt the lone company people were there at their house. As they approached the house two of their people fell into the pit. Xiaoji and Main got alert and thought of making a surprise attack on them and got the sticks fired and held them ready by Main as Xiaoji told her to be careful. As the people approached Main surprise attacked them on their face, and they fell to the ground as if it was just a torch but when Main uses her Superman skill that turns into a formidable weapon. As the target for them was Xiaoji not Main he handed her a torch and she attacked them and they were warned that don't consider it as just a torch as she has the skill. Xiaoji handed more such torches to her but now that people from the debt collection company knew the trick to dodge the attack done by Main they lit off the fire from the torch using their legs. People laughed at them as they did not stop throwing the torch at them now that Main has put Xiaoji in darkness that no one could see him after carefully checking the position of the people from the debt company. Now Xiaoji handed some heavy circle thing to Main to attack the enemies and she took that and with full force threw it on them all the enemies were scared and fell to ground and thought what was that and what happened to them. Xiaoji and Main felt successful and again he handed her the same weapon that they used earlier. Now the enemies spread out at the pace so that the attack won't impact everyone. The enemies realized that this was an AoE attack where all of them were injured. The boss ordered them to find cover to protect them and told them to hide from the Main's attack. Someone from the group of people who came to attack Xiaoji and Main asked the boss where to hide as the king thought how stupid it was to ask such a silly question at this time when Main was attacking. As Xiaoji's house was surrounded by walls of hedges moreover he had cut all the thick trees around where the enemy was hiding. With the torches that Main threw earlier gave light so Main and Xiaoji could see two of the enemies standing there so the boss of the debt company told them that the place they were standing was not safe as Main and Xiaoji could see them. Now it was Main's finishing blow was with the basket of stones as she would release the basket these stones would turn to ranged weapons that only Main can use to exterminate the enemy. She threw the basket of shotguns with which the boss was dead and remaining of them we not able to decide what to do at this point Xiaoji took charge and told them to surrender peacefully before they ran away. 
He said he would attack again if they tried to run and said to them that if they wanted freedom from their boss where they used to work at his feet they had to surrender. So everyone surrendered to Xiaoji and everyone started to explain their reason that someone was hired just for money. So he requested him to spare his life and Xiaoji ordered Maine to tie them all and his plan succeeded as that was expected. He felt no point in keeping so many people tied with him so he left to meet the boss of the Lone Shark Company. Xiaoji greeted them good morning and entered the office to their surprise it was Xiaoji whom the boss ordered to kill but he was alive. It seems that the people at Lone Shark were expecting the death news to be heard at the office, but everything changed. Xiaoji ordered them to call the boss Golded San as he had something important to tell to the boss. They told them to wait until they could call the boss. After a wait as the boss came there and asked them what do they want. To which Xiaoji said he was attacked by some robbers as they broke into his house yesterday. Boss felt sorry for that and asked them did they just come to inform him of that. Then Xiaoji said the important point was that the robbers that came into my house yesterday actually claimed that they came to kill him on Golded San's order. The boss did not agree to what Xiaoji was claiming for and said to them that do they believe those thugs so Golded Sands was not involved in whatever happened yesterday. Xiaoji said the people who tried to kill him were enslaved he asked him again if he was involved in the fight that broke out yesterday. Xiaoji said as he wanted to enslave Mayne for her debts, won't it be possible for him to become Xiaoji's slave though it was a bad joke. Golded became furious and told them to leave as he was sleepy. Xiaoji warned him that as he was leaving, the police would come because of the robbery attempt that was done on him so it would be better to be awake and they left. After they left Mayne hide her face and Xiaoji asked him if something was wrong with her. She replied that she was scared as he provoked the gold ed. She felt it was still hard for her to face the gold ed in the company. He explained her that was done on purpose as the police had their eye on them those who faked to kill him and they would behave next time. Since the police were watching them it would be harder for them to attack. Maine asked again if that was the case why did he provoke them as if they would attack us immediately that would confirm that gold ed was involved and they would attack us after everything now gets settled so that we can be prepared for the next attack as they would have no time to plan the attack. Xiaoji said let's prepare for a surprise attack on them as he got his flashback when he was working at Black Company. Those people used to complain even after so much hard work that he used to put at work. After they reached home that evening they could smell and see some more bandits who were trying to attack started to burn some strange thing behind his house. Xiaoji felt it was poisonous looking purple gas that was meant to produce abnormal status-like condition. To their surprise smoke was traveling towards them instead of rising up in the air as if someone had done some magic on the smoke. So they realized that it was magic from a fantasy world as Xiaoji could predict. Then he planned to drink the antidote to the smoke that was going to produce paralysis, sleep and the poison he doubted that it was main under target so that smoke would kill her. And if they fail this way then they would try other way to attack us so it was right decision to drink up every portion as he cultivated so many antidotes. He had so much money with him. Xiaoji thought the royal pharmacy had so many different kinds of goods that could be cultivated as well and could be used to increase the production of them. As they waited they could hear them move as they broke the hedge to hide themselves but Xiaoji would not let it stay like that as he planned to get them repaired by them later. As the bandits approached them, considering Xiaoji and Main were alive, they could see no one in the house as it was too dark for them to see. As he marched forward to find them he realized that there was no floor under the bandit, and he got scared and shouted out of shock to see such a big pit inside the house. As Main and Xiaoji were watching them they could understand the point that they did not want the light in order to be noticed as there was huge hole dug deep by Main as it could be used for manual labor where the superman skill was very convenient to use as some people stayed outside the house felt something wrong happened inside the house so they called the boss and he ordered them to throw the light ball and they could discover a giant pit inside the house. Xiaoji and Main has planned round two to be disclosed. As all the bandits were before them the boss sensed them that they could be outside the house so he ordered them to search them outside the house. While Xiaoji told Main that he was counting on him to watch his back and she agreed to his command. As he wanted to use Maine and send her in the front line with some peace of mind as the bandits approached they could see some people with hoods on them and sense Xiaoji and Main there but as Maine went for attack with the big logs they were scared. As Maine threw the logs at them the bandits were scared to death as that log would fall on them and would kill them. The house also started to break after the impact of the log. Xiaoji told Maine that it was their next strategy to use log as their ammunition to fight the bandits as they could repair the house later as it was old house and it was also in bad condition for very long time. S. Hauji used his cultivation skill to mass produce logs from which he made torches. He supplied more of the logs to Maine to attack the bandits to her surprise all of the bandits were scared to watch Maine with the logs as she approached close to them. 
Her skill was awesome as she could blow away the magician while leaving behind the light magic as that was helpful to them. As bandits could not stop Maine from attacking them they thought to surround her before she threw the log at them. Since the bandits cannot kill Maine and cannot use any magic or projectile they decided to pull the log from Maine's hands. As they took the log it started to wear out and now the bandits got the chance to attack Maine but they forgot that Maine now was employee to Shaoji who had arranged for her the swords. As she started to attack those bandits they started to run for their lives the boss told them that the weapon she was using would break any time. When the boss appeared he told them to attack them as they were only two in number and the boss got angry at them and hit them. The boss brought someone with him and uncovered him to show it to Maine and Shaoji to their shock it was a giant with a morazon and as they were watching the giant boss said to Maine that it was not only her that has the skill, but this was the same case like her who could not pay the debt of his and has become a slave of mine. Now Shaoji and Maine were in shock after they heard that news. The boss Goldet has ordered the giant to catch Maine and told him to fulfill his role of slave. As the giant was about to attack them Maine insisted Shaoji to stay back and she went for the attack but Shaoji felt Maine's movements were dull so he thought was hesitating to attack the giant as he was an innocent slave. But still she was the professor of the Superman skill with a mitral sword in her hand as it was obvious that their armor made of iron would not stand a chance against the mitral sword and it broke to pieces only with one attack. Boss was laughing at her as she attempted to fight the giant it was of no use as he had defense skill. That was why it would be hard to fight him. Due to the defense skill the giant's armor got durable as the defense skill would not only strength his body but also the armor that he was wearing. The pan that Goldhead had in his mid was to get Maine and make her his slave and sign a contract with her and she would kill the man behind her that was Shaoji with her own hands. Maine was surprised with the cruel thoughts of the boss. She asked him what he was talking about even a slave contract magic could force him to do someone's bidding. She said there was no way that he could use that order to kill someone so Shaoji understood the whole reason behind the story of boss making slaves was contract magic. So the boss could make contract magic through his contract magician in his office, who can make irregular slave contracts. It was just as Shaoji thought about the boss and informed the boss that he would be chased by the authorities after they could know that Goldhead was a criminal but boss was not scared of them as the nobles of the country were his allies. The boss also shares some trade secrets to them that he was not only the person who was involved in such kind of trade but there were many people who would want their slaves to do some secret jobs as there were many people like him that were specialized in irregular slave trading. The Klaus, where slave cannot tell what was right and wrong so we can do anything that we want to with the slave. Shaoji felt this country has been rotten to the core that's why the boss was not scared of anything and he was confident with the way he was talking to them. He ordered the giant again to catch Maine as he was causing some kind of suffer to the giant using his hands. The giant in pain followed the orders of the boss came to attack Maine and she was also ready with her weapons and attacked the giant with the armor and she broke all of them and was left with none. In the middle of all these attacks there came some slaves who wanted to take over Maine as she ran out of all her weapons only scabboard were left to use. Shaoji felt bad for her as she was fighting the slaves all alone. Boss again ordered the giant contract slave to catch Maine as she ran out of her weapons. She was scared at this situation and had thoughts that what would happen but gained courage and attacked him with scabboard. Shaoji shouted at her Maine. And when she looked at him he said he was kidding and held the scabbard at him as it was heavy attack using her hips to get close to the giant enemy. She was also focusing on the same point that she used to attack earlier. Now that the enemies exceeded his defense skill allowance so he was left with armor with no skill. As she was attacking the enemy she could fell that the enemy was in pain but still was following boss's order. And she warned if he would attack Shaoji there he fell down and Maine felt like real bodyguard of Shaoji. Watching all this Goldhead saw his men stared to run away from her but he warned them and told them that she was unarmed and told them to fight her but Maine was confident. And she asked him to send his next slave to fight her. Then he sent all his other slaves to attack her but as they saw her fight the skilled slave pinned to ground all of them ran away including Goldhead saying that he would return and would take the revenge. Maine felt sorry for Shaoji as Goldhead ran away but he said to her that Goldhead was already dead anyway. He felt he was facing a person who was backed by nobles of this country and felt now was his time to shine in this country. Two days later there came police to the lone shark Goldhead office as he was suspicious of illegal trading of slaves. As Maine and Shaoji were hiding near the Goldhead office and were watching them catch the slaves and Goldhead was missing from the office, the police officer asked them if they were leftover slaves that could fight from before. But to the investigation officer's surprise they said they were contract magic slaves. The investigation officer felt the sign as a camouflage but the contract magic used on these slaves was illegal. 
from now on the lone shark Golded became wanted criminal in the country for trading contract magic slaves for trading using fake contract magic. So now the Golded assets were taken to custody by the investigation officer. Among these there were some people who suffered under Golded felt relieved and could not stop their laughs as bad guy was in investigating officer custody. After all this got finished Maine and Xiaoji walked back home to Hotel Inn at the royal capital and felt accomplished as they have won over Golded. Xiaoji asked Maine if Golded was backed by nobles of this country how can he be caught as he was on the run. Xiaoji said if he was being protected by nobles of this country, not all of the nobles would be supporting him. If they could provide information to the nobles that were not aware of this kind of illegal trading. If Golded gets arrested then all the nobles who were supporting him do illegal contracts they as could be at trouble in the country because they could get exposed for purchasing illegal slaves. Xiaoji explains Maine that there were also conflicts between fractions among nobles, as Maine could not get who fractions were. So he explains as nobles hang out with people with benefits, and they always keep fighting. Now Xiaoji has letter to fractions exposing of his evil deeds and presented those illegal slaves that Main have defeated as evidence. He met the fraction of noble protecting Golded. He made a request at the Adventurer's Guild asking for the most tight-lipped adventurer who was specialized in gathering information to investigate. Xiaoji felt hard to convince nobles as he met them for the first time without any introduction of him as he felt it was of no use to get involved with nobles of this world. He asked himself of what best he could do to trap Golded. Xiaoji bribed the gatekeepers with bright gold and yellow color sweets so that the gatekeepers would deliver the letter to their master along with some slaves as proof. To Xiaoji's observation he could confirm that some sources were questionable as there were conflicts among fractions, but nobles were overjoyed after they heard about the Golded's news and decided to investigate. Xiaoji realized that he doesn't have to worry about Golded as he was on the run. When he used to work at Black Company he got to know about them when he faced conflicts between fractions. The nobles who were with Golded would come after him at the same time as he won't sequel that as they were connected to him and Golded won't get any sympathy from Xiaoji. As Main felt Xiaoji said something to her but he did not say anything, and they decided to work hard. They planned to go to New Town today and they left the place with agreement. Golded felt restless and started to ask himself that why was such thing happening to him as he was the intimidating high-end loan shark but now was running away because of the fear of getting caught like his subordinates. He decided to kill every one of them who had put him in that place. The only person that came to his mind due to which he was in that position was Xiaoji. If it weren't for him, Main would have become his slave through which he would have planned to assassinate important people. He also planned over Main by influencing nobles to get Main into more debt but from nowhere he appeared suddenly and paid all her debts. As he was recalling the past that he had he faced with Main and Xiaoji as they repelled his attack twice and sent guards to his office. If it weren't for Main he wouldn't have been not in that situation of running from investigation officers. Golded wanted to take revenge for the loss that he has done to him by killing Xiaoji and make Main his slave and make her work to the core. To execute his plan he has to leave that country. It was necessary to buy the horse and buy a house for him from a merchant on the street or maybe grabbing from somewhere or steal one house. With this thought he left to other country. As he was traveling he fell to the ground on his face and he felt as if he lost his voice as it won't come out. He was attacked by someone from the back who has sealed his body movement. As he was instructed by his client to immediately kill him without any delay, and he informed him that he won't do any unnecessary torture to him. As Golded was shouting for help and wanted him to leave but the enemy said goodbye to Golded and left him there in the wilderness on his own. As the days passed by Main shouted for Sao Ji San to inform him that there were some guests at their house. Xiao Ji wondered who could that guest be as they approached near them while Main and Xiao Ji were building their house. To their surprise they were the illegal slaves that they caught when Golded attacked them. As the illegal slaves wanted to be thankful to Xiao Ji to which he was in awe and surprise as all of the illegal slaves fell before Xiao Ji. He felt it awkward as why were they behaving in such manner that he did not expect from them. They started thanking him for reporting Golded to the authority for his illegal slave trading, and they got released from the slavery from being victim of illegal slave contract. Also the debt that he owed has been revoked and all the evil deeds that Golded has been exposed. Xiaoji replied to them was that so, and thought if nobles that were backed by Golded, and the opposing nobles threatened the slaves as victims did not send them to slave town instead release them. They all were feeling grateful for what Xiaozhou has done to them. Others said they won't forget the favor that he did for the rest of their lives. If he needed something they were ready available to which again Xiaoji said it was just the little that he could do for them. So now Xiaoji asked them if they had any work after that as some of them might have become slave as someone would be after their skill, but some other might be in debt and difficulty in life. 
as everyone explained their own trouble that they had like someone thought to go back to his hometown, while the other said if they had been to their hometown there they could have found the job using their parents' connections. Some said they had to rely on their brother as his brother was lacking the manpower at his workplace so that he could help his brother and feed himself. One small girl said she was sold except his eldest son to the slave traders due to bad harvest because as a slave we can get the meal. Others said as their parents lost their business so they lost everything. Women there explained that her village was attacked by monster and that got destroyed so she had to run away from there in desperation. After Shaoji heard all the various reasons for the illegal slavery that people went through was sad but he could sense the problem now and thought it was no t his job to think about them as Maine was profitable so he hired her and decided to not shoulder any unnecessary burden on him. As Shaoji and Main were walking Main asked Shaoji if he could help them to which he said it seems like she wanted him to save them and said he understood her feelings but he did not have that luxury of saving so many people. As he thought even after using his cultivation skill to increase the money it wouldn't be easy for him to manage dozens of people as she was already aware if that response from Shaoji. Main with loud voice said to him that if he could hire them to work at his shop. She said if in future Shaoji would not only be a traveling merchant but also has his own store for which employees would be needed. Even traveling merchants have the option of forming a caravan with multiple carriages. Then Shaoji started to think about that if he had to succeed as merchant he had to have employees who could manage many different products for him. He agreed to her and said that it was certainly a good idea so in that case she wanted him to hire them for his business. He thought for a while that this might be very important decision for him and his business expansion as he worked for so long on earth for black company. But being a corporate slave was deeply rooted in him that he failed to consider the manager's point of view. To fulfill the dream that he longed for want be full without employees so to get closer to his plan he spoke to everyone and said he would want them to work for his store to everyone's surprise as they were not expecting this from Shaoji. Now he was nervous to work with dozens of people but to his surprise as he asked them the response was overwhelming that everyone wanted to work for him and Shaoji onboarded all of them to his work. Everyone said to him that he has take care of them and called him master to which he was in shock. Main explained him for the reason that they were calling him master was that he has hired more than dozen people and has become major retailer in the town so it was natural that his employees would call him master. So finally in other world people call their company president as master and he felt comfortable. Everybody chanted long live the master and they would follow him as long as they live on top of their voice. Shaoji told them to stop that as he was feeling embarrassed and said to them if he had to feel the same as employees increases. He felt being a manager was a tough job to do. Next day at Royal Capital Workshop Street they met a scary man with cigar in his mouth who informed them that he was being targeted. Now Shaoji felt new problem has raised not long before everything got settled. Shaoji asked him for what trouble was coming by that they can be aware of. The man replied that incident that happened with the lone shark Goldet and the weapon killer got famous all around the neighborhood that there came some people who indirectly inquired about them and they wanted to get rid of them and he informed them to act fast. He also said to them that while preparing for employment of former slaves, they might hear stories like they would get Maine's weapons repaired. Also some of the nobles who were in illegal trading along with Goldet have surfaced in recent times there was rumor that the shift in power of influence from nobles has changed and there was some state of violent disturbance in people above. So the nobles that suffered losses might have sent some assassins to inquire about us. Shaoji felt he cannot die at this moment when he has hired bunch of employees. That person also suggested them to run and hide somewhere as soon as possible both Shaoji and Main thanked his for his advice and left. As they were going at some point Main said to Shaoji that it was all her fault that he was in that situation but he said to her that it was also his problem. Now that the problem has arisen she told him that let's hurry up with our plan and quickly move to other country and start their business. Main also asked about the new employees that he has hired to which he replied that it would be difficult for dozens of people to escape and it was also difficult to prepare a job for all of them abroad since it was dangerous. At Royal Capital Merchants Guild all the employees gathered and were in a process of registration and as Shaoji and Main were finishing all the paperwork to get the merchant's license while they were sipping drink, they made some preparations in order to get them some work in this country as Akina firm's employees. As they drank they doubted if the straw was made of plants. Based on their field expertise and support they started to divide the roles as they would be working in a store in the country while we could manufacture products outside the country and transport them to the employees to sell them inside this country. 
Now that the plan to do business was in progress they had some time to discuss where to escape as they have changed their appearance to conceal their identity to the people of the town to avoid the people they were target for. Lane was enjoying bit too much as Xiaoji felt from her behavior. They were more worried about how could they send their goods to the employees and where can they find their good escape destination to do mass production. They both were thinking on the same for a while. As they waited they could sense some nobles looking for them in that place where they were having dinks to their surprise. They thought if nobles were looking for them, then there was possibility that the information would be passed to the border patrol to prevent their escape. Xiaoji asked is there any such magic that would inform border patrol? Main told him about some transmission magic as she felt she had underestimated the fantasy world without telephones. In that chase they thought they would have to escape secretly out of this country, but felt even that was difficult to travel as there were secret detection magicians that would stand at the border to catch any immigrants that would cross the border. Xiaoji asked can they detect the borders of the entire country. She said no as it would be difficult for them to detect everything. Other than flat terrain and terrain with hidden places everywhere it seems that the detection magic was not installed as these places were impossible to travel, and these lands were full of dangerous monsters. It was also difficult to deliver the products from outside the country as it would be tough for them to escape from the country. It was highly impossible to deliver the products to the employees who would sell them inside the country as there was no time to gather information for escaping from this country. Xiaoji thought if he would leave all the employees in that situation as it was hard for him to handle and gave a thought that he did not want it to be like an evil manager from the bottom of his heart. Main suggested traveling through Forest of Dark Destruction and he was scared after he heard the name to be so wild but as its name said it was Dangerous Forest and had plenty of strong monsters. Their detection magic might not be installed as nobody would enter that place. She showed him the map to explain the escape, as the forest was surrounded by multiple countries, but Xiaoji asked if that's the case then other countries would use magic to deforestation and create a passage to invite that forest. Mayan explained that it was not possible to invade this forest as dark destruction emits special kind of waves that robs magician of its magic hence that would be difficult to invade as the forest was size of a country. It was dangerous forest but still she was recommending, traveling that way because she was confident that she could surpass the danger that would come her way while crossing the forest. Xiaogi doubted as Main cranked a laugh on him saying she can talk big because he was providing her with the weapons, so he said Main San was also strong and counter to her. Then Xiaoji had an idea to conquer the forest of destruction as they could secure a route for delivering the goods for delivering the goods to the employees inside the country. Finally they took the decision to travel the forest way and escape from the country. Main agreed to do her best to cross the forest safely. Then he asked her if she has the breakthrough supplies to cross that dangerous forest. She told him the most important thing to carry could be found at Royal Capital Potion Shop, where they planned to buy the recovery portion as they were forcefully breaking through the forest. It was important that they secure a way to recover their health said Xiaoji was that the right thought. As an adventurer Main showed quite different dependable kind of face as she was determined and this probably was her nature. He said it was different potion from where he used to buy before and they were looking forward for it as they entered the potion shop there were all kinds of customers where they saw a beautiful woman with a potion in her hand and saw she was calm and gentle beauty. Then they concentrated on remembering the colors of potions to distinguish the effect they produce like blue was for healing wounds, green was for eliminating poison and yellow was for healing from paralysis. While purchasing the potion they tied to distinguish between good and bad quality of potion as good quality of potion was transparent, and cheap potion contained little bit of thrash in the potion. They realized that the good quality of potion was expensive that not everyone could afford to buy that potion as it was consumable item. Main felt Xiaoji was being very decisive about the purchase so she went to look for some good quality cheap potion. So, finally he decided to buy the best and good quality potions and Main felt irritated at his indecisiveness. Later he explained her that the transparent potion was good and it was better to carry good potion if there were plenty of monsters then it would be better to prepare with the best product. As they carried ten of each of the best quality potion to Mr. Clerk, everybody was shocked that how rich Xiaoji was as he was buying in bulk. Some felt he was some noble servant as they looked like low-class citizens and did not look that rich. He went and looked around the potion store for some more potions later he felt as if he acted like an oil baron on earth that completely buys off the products of a store. The beautiful lady that they saw earlier was also surprised looking at him and Xiaoji felt intimidated by her looks. 
he felt that as a prominent encounter with her. Meantime, Mr. Clerk finished billing for them and asked in doubt if something was wrong with them as they have ordered 10 pieces of each of high-quality potions. Maine said that the purple-colored potion was not ordered by them. Mr. Clerk said they had good sight as that potion was monster avoidance potion. When that potion gets sprinkled on carriage or equipment, it emits a scent that prevents monsters from approaching the carriage and the power would last for a week and Shaoji felt that was convenient kind of potion. The beautiful women that they had encountered earlier heard about that potion and considered knowing more about that potion to Mr. Clerk's surprise. She said it's a potion whose effect that she has never heard of and Mr. Clerk replied that it was an item that traveling magician sold that to them and they have verified the effect of that potion. Shioji and Maine asked for the bill and he said 10 gold coins the clerk thought he has negotiated nicely, as that product was troublesome to sell and furthermore without reducing the price he was overcharging it to add to the maintenance cost as it was not selling. So, they asked about how effect was this potion. The shopkeeper Mr. Clerk said it was according to the magician that came to sell this said it could probably work on B-grade monsters. Main explained B-rank monsters aim for high-ranking parties even at the Adventures Guild in the town she added it was that amazing kind of potion. Now Shaoji felt this potion could reduce Main's burden at the forest might be reduced. The clerk also wanted to know the market price for this potion and Shaoji started to negotiate with him and offered to give six gold coins and he would buy all the stock of this store's inventory and now the negotiation starts. Mr. Clerk opened his mouth wide after hearing the offer from him as it was six gold coins for every stock in the inventory of the store. Main whispered to Shaoji it would be a right as he said every stock in the inventory. Mr. Clerk started to think his price would be price for any item and he did not have that many stocks. Mr. Clerk counter-offered saying if they would buy all the stock in bulk he would like to offer it for special price of 9 gold coins. No but 8 gold coins is a discount and Shaoji asked her if this product would be popular. As she said it was difficult to sell that product for them Mr. Clerk got mad and stared to run as he got panicked. As Main was explaining Shaoji that if it was B-rank monster it was cheap to hire adventurer. If there was a place where there were higher than B-rank so she would never went unless she as an adventurer could handle that kind of place. Mr. Clark went back to after hearing them and called store manager to talk to them. Now the offer by the store manager for buying up all the stocks in the inventory was discounted to 7 gold coins each bottle. The manager calculated the whole inventory of monster potion which was 20 bottles and other high quality potion which was 10 bottles each would cost a total to 200 pieces of gold coin. Main was in shock. Shaoji thought it was reasonable to get surprised as it was millions of yens, but the market price of monster potion was much cheaper as it was quoted. As everyone was surprised at the thought that it was 200 gold coins, Shaoji agreed to take them and with this they had come to a common decision. The shopkeepers were felling relieved as they sold all the dead stock for discount of 30%. Shaoji deposited 40 gold coins as a deposit and he told them that he would give the remaining after the goods was delivered and the manager agreed. As Shaoji and Main left the store they bowed and escorted them. He informed Main that he would cultivate the potion when he would go home for the purpose to conquer the forest. As they walked past by they could see the same beautiful lady that they encountered in the potion store. Shaoji what was that all about and thought she doesn't look like their pursuer. As Main watched Shaoji she felt as if he was watching her big breast and tall long black hair and he asked her if they both went for sightseeing on their way home and Main agreed. He felt as if Main has recorded from her bad mood. As they were walking by Shaoji could feel the pressure of crossing the forest of dark destruction where high-ranking monsters were rampant. And the interesting truth was they have the antidote to monster that was monster avoidance potion. When they reached their home thought the forest they could see a giant snake and they fought it and felt if they would have to live in that kind of place. Shaoji felt if he could match the potion with Main's power along with cultivation skill that he had he could not only pass the forest but also this forest of destruction would become their new headquarters. They have planned to visit a clothes shop in outskirts of royal capital and they went to buy employees outfit for Main. As she explained the shop owner the requirement of their business that they were about to start in the forest of dark destruction as it was out of town and they would feel safe from their pursuers. Vain started to try the employee outfit as they had secretary suits and many different kinds of cloths. She also tried mini skirt and Shaoji felt that it was great with her thin line. The shopkeeper felt it was cute and Shaoji laughed at her and said if that was her original employee outfit for which she said to him that if that was his impression on her. 
shopkeeper continued to show her the dress and this time it was dress that would turn Xiaoji on as it was again he laughed at her and said it was like nurse outfit. Well it was a fantasy style. She also showed Main her other collection of cloths but Xiaoji kept laughing at her as he felt if she had misunderstood of what product the company was dealing. Again this time as the shopkeeper went to get more outfits that would resemble employee outfits Xiaoji laughed at her and gave her cloth to cover her front and finally they brought some clothes that Main used to buy normally. Main was standing on the snake with her weapon and Xiaoji was standing beside the snake as they could kill the giant snake. She asked her again if they had to live in that kind of place. As they were supposed to pass thought the forest for whatever reason did she said that they would be living there to answer that they had to look out for some events that happened in the past so far. After a while ago the Sen day after they entered the forest of destruction they felt tired walking in the forest that they were not used to in another world. Xiaoji sat as he felt tired and Main warned him that he should train a bit more as Main told her who had Superman skills. At any rate in this forest where monsters would immediately attack as they could find him idle in the serenity. He decided to employ the monster avoidance potion. The genuine solution to their predicament, Main declared to Xiaoji San. As Xiaoji poured the potion, its effects unfolded before their eyes. Monsters, visible from a distance, hastily retreated, and even the B-ranked creatures designated for higher level parties by the Adventurers Guild refrained from approaching them. Main, having warned Xiaoji earlier, reiterated the importance of evading their pursuers sent by nobles. The forest, known as the Forest of Destruction, harbored dangers that necessitated caution. Despite the risks, they had to traverse it, for beyond lay the promise of eluding pursuit once they entered another country. They would have to face the problem in the forest and they passed by and saw Big Snake, a raked monster, the king of forests of destruction which was the greatest snake. There was forest bears similar to that of Maine had defeated when they were escorting him and the single forest bear was C-ranked. Xiaoji said before they entered the forest they could feel about the thing's existence from Maine as they have gathered information in advance at the Merchants Guild and also they have examined their equipments. Main now has small amount of Amor in addition to the usual Mitral sword. That sword was custom made from the blacksmith Muad. Xiaoji wore an armor that was easy to move if that was heavy then he won't be able to move with his power. He felt he has to protect his sensitive parts. Now that the preparation was done to live in the forest they had to fight and take that monster-like thing down and that would be their first step to live in the forest. Main asked him for why would he think that he could live in that place once it was defeated as that thing was the strongest in the forest along with that there were other monsters around they have not decided on the location of headquarters. Then they decide to defeat that thing in the first place and went by with a plan as that giant snake with wide mouth open they could see the snake above them and it unfolded its real nature as it made some sounds gr. It felt like that the snake has noticed them as they suddenly approached the snake and were getting ready to attack the giant snake with their mitral sword as the snake approached closer, and they could hit the snake on its face but to their surprise the sword broke. Xiaoji laughed and said sword broke with one hit. Then they took the new sword and started their attack at it again as they stood facing the giant snake Mitral looked in the eyes of the giant snake as Xiaoji shouted at her to take over the giant main sand started to attack by cutting all the trees that were in their way obstructing and after creating some space to attack she hit the giant snake on its face again this time she could feel something was sprayed at her by the snake and that was poison fog as Xiaoji realized about that poison as he had heard about that from some source of information but it was still scary as she could not get closer to the giant snake because of that poison attack on her. She could not attack the snake as the moment was sealed after the poison was sprayed. Both Main and Xiaoji had planned to attack it with some strategy so they wanted to get the giant snake in correct position and correct speed. As Xiaoji could do the position check and speed check they implemented the plan that Xiaoji has set up before and pulled the rope that had all the monster avoidance potion that they brought earlier and finally all the potions fell on the snake that Xiaoji has cultivated in bulk. They transported all the crates of monster avoidance potion to the forest and they laid a trap in the forest. Bain was surprised by the quantity of potions that Xiaoji could arrange and he pretended to be ignorant as he brought the some more potions. According to the potions ingredients table it would keep the monsters away due to the effect of a poison no matter what rank the monster was if that gets bathed in such huge amounts of poison. Now after this effect of poison the moment was restricted for the snake as Xiaoji told Main San to plan her attack at this time and she trapped the snake with all the trees around its body and attacked it with her mitral sword as they could double the movement restriction but to their surprise the snake was shaking of the effect of the potions. And Main San got trapped in the shackles of the snake before she could attack and she resisted to get out off the shackle but got trapped really hard. 
Now as she was in pain and could see small snakes trying to attack her as Xiaoji shouted at her with loud voice main san with full power she broke the shackles of the snake and told not to underestimate her and reminded that she was the mate merchant Xiaoji's bodyguard with Spider-Man skill and as their new business and adventure has just begun as the first step was to kill the giant monster and she with her full power attacked the snake again this time and could slit the snake into pieces after which she stood on the snake and Xiaoji felt that this was the true power of main that Gold had felt embarrassed as he could not use such power of her of his advantage. Xiaoji shouted and declared bonus after watching her courageous fight with the snake to which she replied to pay her a lot of salary. And this was the end of the snake monster. Main asked if they were going to live in that place. The answer to that question was that Xiaoji has already evaluated and said with the power of Main San and the effect of potion he has evaluated the power necessary to ensure their safety in the forest so Main felt if he was evaluating her power as well. To her surprise he kept that as a secret so that she won't get nervous by hearing him say that he was evaluating her power if she would have known that he was evaluating her power, she would have been scared stiff. Now that Main when she got to notice that was the reason why she never told him about the details regarding the secret weapons and the trap and she cried at him saying as he was having strong hold of her character and weakness of her subordinate. However they felt the result of killing the king of the forest was bit difficult but they could succeed in that with the help of Main so she thanked him for recognizing her. Finally they could sit and feel the habitat of Greater Snake as it was spacious just as the rumor was spread about the place. Now that it seemed that a ranked monster wound approached that place because of the smell so they thought that would be their headquarters as they could beat that giant monster and that was amazing. Xiaoji felt that it was the new level for them as a merchant and it was not a cheap hut that was pushed to them by the kingdom and they decided to carry a carriage to build an office in the middle of the forest. In the heart of the ominous forest of destruction, Main and Xiaoji embarked on a unique venture, establishing an office where they could channel their respective skills. Xiaoji, the master of the craft, would handle the intricate nail work, while Main, under his guidance, would contribute by clearing and preparing the site. Main, with a determined resolve, took on the initial task of clearing the area. Armed with a tool to cut down trees, she diligently followed Xiaoji's instructions. The sound of trees falling and the rhythmic thud of her efforts echoed through the forest. The objective was to create a space for their office, a sanctuary amidst the untamed wilderness. Xiaoji, the meticulous planner, directed Main with precision. He outlined the dimensions and layout, ensuring every detail aligned with his vision. As Main executed the plan, the once densely wooded area gradually transformed into an open canvas awaiting the imprint of their endeavor. The next phase involved the arduous task of flattening the ground. Main, under Xiaoji's guidance, worked tirelessly to level the surface. The duo, a symbiotic force of craftsmanship, overcame the challenges posed by the rugged terrain. With their combined efforts, the ground was soon ready to embrace the foundation of their envisioned office. As the sun cast its golden hues across the forest, Main and Xiaoji delved into the construction process. Xiaoji's expertise in carpentry shone as he directed Main in laying the foundation. Using logs, they meticulously arranged the building blocks, adhering to Xiaoji's precise instructions. The process logs, inserted alternately in a vertical manner, began to take shape, forming the sturdy base of their log house. The day wore on, but the duo persisted in their mission. The last log found its place, marking the completion of the foundation. Standing at the entrance, hands resting on the walls they had erected, Main and Xiaoji beheld the tangible result of their collaborative effort. Their office stood proudly within the heart of the forest. Entering the newly constructed space, they found themselves surrounded by the earthy scent of wood and the promise of new beginnings. The shelves, now neatly arranged, awaited the goods that would soon find a home within their woodland haven. A sense of accomplishment permeated the air as they admired the fruits of their amateur carpentry. For Xiaoji, the act of building a log house stirred memories of a time when he yearned for such simplicity during his studies and investigations. Despite uncertainties in the details, he reassured himself, reasoning that earthquakes were unheard of in their secluded corner of the forest. The longing for a log house, buried within him for so long, now manifested as a tangible reality. For him the other side of the door was very significant as he laid field for cultivation and he put fence around the field that cannot be seen from outside what was being cultivated in the field and he has also informed Maine to not enter that place. Now that place was safe for mass cultivation. He felt the need of mitral sword at the moment as they don't have enough mitral swords after the gold ed incident and also he wanted to mass produce the monster avoidance potion. Main felt happy for having her own room in the office so Xiaoji asked her the reason for her happiness. 
She said only the nobles and big merchants have their own rooms, so he felt owning the room in this world was considered as luxury. So they agreed to buy things to decorate their house when they next went to town. Xiaoji asked her if that was okay with her. Xiaoji wanted to ask Main San something that was lingering in his mind about the decoration that she did with the greater snake bones. And then she replied saying if this place has smell of giant snake then no monster might come near them by decorating it with them would surely intimidate the monster as a good measure. He said so this place was proof that it was our territory. Now Main had something to ask Xiaoji so he accepted her question which was about the way he would express his words. To which Xiaoji doubted himself and asked himself if he did something that was considered rude in different world. She said she knew that she was his bodyguard and subordinate for him as she felt if he could feel less formal about it as when she made him realize that he was talking in less formal manner when he was talking to Maud at the blacksmith Maud place. She said the same that she would feel happy if he would talk to her formally and she said sorry and agreed that he has taken good care of her even if she was his bodyguard. Xiaoji wondered if he could stay in that same tone would help him in the business-like relationship. Main also got to her notice that people would underestimate him because of his polite attitude to which he said being businesslike was it a problem. Now that he understood that she was facing and the problems that he had for himself to be casual, and Main insisted him to call her only Main not Main Sen then he said he'll be her at her care Main. She said yes yeah, Xiaoji Sam. And from that day onwards new relationship between two of them has begun. As they were holding each other hands and looked at each other Main asked what was. Xiaoji Sen then he replied her that she was crushing her hands and they cracked into laughter and Main felt for that incident. Xiaoji felt glad that he bought those high quality potions to that place. One month later after all the goods was ready to be shipped to the town where they had entrusted some of the former slaves turned employees. Main felt if they were really ready for going to town as it was so much fun and she wanted to spend more time with him. He replied to her that the former slave Ogma would be coming near the forest as he wanted to convey that they did not hear rumors about the pursuers and they did not see any suspicious shadow of them, and they also told that their pursuer had given up. In one month Xiaoji has cultivated various things that they brought and has increased the production. The felt if they won't go the town then the living expenses that he gave to them would exhaust and he explained that the forest was just a cover for their office as they were going back to town to start their business in full scale. They entered the town and they were escorted by Ogma the employee, and they finally reached their store. They felt it was compact but new construction, as Ogma told them to take a look inside. As they entered inside Ogma called all the slaves to gather all of them and everybody welcomed the master and S.H. Xiaoji felt embraced. Xiaoji thanked everyone for their hard work and told them to go back to work, and everybody did so. Everybody was nervous as the president suddenly visited the place. Shiyuji felt happy for the work that slave Ogma showed him and he appreciated him for his work. Bain felt the same that the store was amazing. Xiaoji asked if the store was expensive as it was small but the location was great as it was along the main street and it was newly constructed. Ogma explained that there was no need to worry about that as this store looked beautiful. Then he took Xiaoji to the other side of the building where it was neglected and nobody would notice that as the front side of the building only has the thin plate attached to improve the customer's impression. Thin plate. Xiaoji asked and he explains that a special permit was required for a commoner to big clean and decent building to his response Xiaoji said he did not know about that and Ogma continues explaining that it takes a lot of money and trust to get this permit. As trust requires long-term business in town along with the backing of influential people in town as to get that permit was impossible for us at this moment said slave Ogma. It was a small shop and faulty place when we bought this so Xiaoji asked customers won't come if it was run down. Faulty place hence there were no customers. So they made only the front look like new construction even if someone would complain we can say it was not rebuilt. Xiaoji was impressed by this and told Main that it was right decision that he heard her opinion about hiring employees. Ogma adds that they have hired a small house where all the employees can live and as former slaves they did not expect that they would live in a proper house. Hesitantly slave Ogma asked master that he wanted favor of his master at the job as they needed two days week of his rest day and happily Xiaoji agreed to their request and told them to take two days odd every week and spend time freely or take proper rest. The slave felt overwhelmed and said for a former slave like them to have such a condition for working was good. Xiaoji also told him that there was also overtime pay, and if somebody has done so they would have to inform him. As he compared the work that he used to do at Black Company where unpaid labor service overtime was very common, Xiaoji informed all the employees that that his goal was to make his store a white company. Everybody thanked Master Xiaoji. He asked to all the employees that by when they can open the store. The slave replied saying that they could open the store after the clerk's training and if the product was planned then they could open anytime. 
Mayne said that she was in business before she was hooked and became slave so her main specialty was management, and she was counting on her talent. So they started to unload the cargo from the carriage that they brought from the office, and that would be their first product. Xiaoji told the slave to inquire that if he had got the price information from the royal capital that he has asked for, for which the slave agreed and told that he has collated only the date from the stores that they could enter like the stores that buy and sell large number of materials such as noble store or a carpenter lumber wholesaler. These were the store that ordinary people can't enter. Xiaoji said if that was the case then he told them to record the price trend. Xiaoji wondered what should be their first product be from foods, minerals, or finished products. So Xiaoji update them to prepare several carriages and the delivery of the goods would be near the forest of destruction. Finally, he felt the Akina store that he dreamt of was open for business and everybody segregated all the cargo and opened them. A week later there came a man shouting master so they asked him what was wrong why was he in hurry and as they were about to open the store. The person replied that someone wanted to see him in the store and they have called him by name. Now Saoji was wondering who could call him by name and only recently came to the store that was still in the middle of predation. Thought who could that be? Felt it won't be pursuers as I already gave up. That person who came to inform looked worried and to the master that they said they would not leave them until they have met him so they were in helpless situation. Xiaoji asked did that person investigate that he was involved in that store? And did they ask her name? To that he replied her name was Sasha she was a beautiful lady. Main acknowledged her by her name. Then Xiaoji asked if she knew her and she replied yes. By her name she was famous among adventurers as a researcher of magic items. Xiaoji wondered why a person that famous would come to him. As they entered the store and saw it was that mysterious beautiful lady that they saw in the potion store. She was sitting on the couch and enjoying the tea and told them that she would love to have such delicious tea. After Xiaoji and Main reached home he said that's one good monkey fighting snake from Monday to Friday. Main said rally. This incident happened two weeks ago at the Forest of Destruction when Main lit the lantern and showed it to him and said this was magic lantern that would light up without using oil. Xiaoji was shocked and asked her if that was the magic item that Ogma brought to him after he reported the recent situation to him. He realized that that was his first time that he saw something like that and when he was recalling about that time when he was attacked by Goldad's gang and also the time when he got summoned he saw that magic item. Main said at Royal Capital she felt shops that were recently developed and sold these lanterns were very popular, and magic items were very precious as it was difficult to make something of that level. So she felt if someone who could develop such a product at their store. Xiaoji replied it was not easy to find a person of such kind and excused him as he got late while changing his clothes. As Main and Xiaoji on one couch and the beautiful lady sat opposite to each other as the slave was passing by. Xiaoji spoke to Sasha San and told her that she was famous magic item researcher. And she replied saying that her name has sold that item huh? Intrigued, Sasha responded that her name had become synonymous with the sold item. Xiaoji, presenting himself as the owner of the Akina store, encountered a surprising A. From Sasha, perplexed, he probed her reaction, to which Sasha explained she hadn't anticipated the store's owner to be the person who visited recently. She expressed her delight at the serendipity of the encounter. She replied she never thought that the person that came to the store the other day, and did not expect him to be the store owner and said this was her lucky break. Sasha introduced herself again and said she was magician but specialized in magic item research, well she could tell by seeing the attire. Xiaoji felt it was Main's time to shine as she was sure a mysterious beauty. Xiaoji asked her for what purpose did she meet him, for which she slowly rolled her dress up and lifted her leg to Xiaoji's surprise he felt she had beautiful legs and Main felt uncomfortable so she went ahead and showed it to her. There was something not right under her skirt. She took a vase and dismantled it and showed it to them. Their eyes and mouth were wide open after watching that as she said these were the magic items. The floor of the store was flooded with water. These items even can be used by Propel who do not know how to use magic, as they can use magic with a press of a switch. She asked them was it not beautiful. She got these by excavating some ancient ruins. There were some lost Madge's magic items. Was it Madge's items or rather floor was getting burnt Shaoji and Main asked. Lost Magia in ancient times had a highly developed magical civilization. Unlike today, at that time things were made with magic items unlike now in society at that time had built extremely advanced civilization. She said ancient magic items have parts that cannot be reproduced today like the small magic item that could produce a simple wind magic even if the power output was suppressed it worked, and the floor dried up. 
By this performance they could actually defeat bandits in that area. Moreover if the power output was suppressed it becomes even more amazing than modern magic items and she informed them that the price won't go down for several hundreds of gold coins. Xiao Ji felt as if she was selling those products to him. She said no as she cannot use it anymore as she has used up all the power of the built-in magic stone. Mayan and Xiao Ji were in shock. The beautiful lady Sasha said the analysis was already finished as these things were already garbage. Main felt those things were something valuable and Xiaoji felt that was very bold presentation by her. He asked her for what does she want to do by bringing consumable magic items to his store. Sasha said the real business talk was about to begin because she has already finished analyzing these things. Sasha showed them magic item and told them that she was going to repair those magic items and make them usable again. They asked what does she meant by that. Sasha told that lost magic items exceeded the magical technologies many researchers haven't done analysis yet. That's why repair was very slow but she was about to show her repair level after this she would analyze lost magic and could create something that exceeds those. That's why she wants Xiaoji to finance her for her research. He asked her if that was the reason why she was here. He suggested her if she would sell her research to the country that would be the better idea. Now those public institutions were monopolized by some people who had magical powers in this country so he felt that was vested interest. Why not sell to private noble? Sasha said the so-called nobles would demand for other things apart from research. Main's eyes were left open. Xiaoji felt that Sasha was certainly a beautiful and erotic lady to the point where her body cannot be compared to Main. Xiaoji asked the reason behind choosing him as there were other large store owners in the town and why did he choose him as the patron candidate who did not start his business yet. Sasha was mesmerizing Xiaoji with her beauty and said the reason for which she chooses him as she could see monster avoidance potion popped out of that place. As this potion was made by her using ancient recopies that she found while exploring the legal reigns. That was the reason why Sasha chose Xiaoji. Main explains that legal reigns was a dangerous archaeological site where even skillful adventurers struggle with. Exploring the ruins cost money and the ingredients for the recipe were all valuable and price was very expensive so it did not sell well. That's why she had to change her mindset to know that it was useless due to cost but she was waiting for the person who could buy it would understand her research. Now Xiaoji understood the real story to find the patron, Sasha sold the monster avoidance potion at the store. And he was acknowledged Boo Sasha at that store. He was having a thought for funding for the research of lost magia. After all the conversation Xiaoji realized that he wanted to be a freelance merchant in the world. Till now mass production capabilities using his cultivation skills he could secure a store and a bodyguard. He also felt he could expand their business content. As he was thinking about the cultivation skill there was a weakness with it as it can only increase items that have already been completed. He felt that he has factory but there was no research and development division it goes the same with the escort as Maine was the only one who was protecting him. While having a drink the Sasha a magic item researcher also a magic user has the power to explore dangerous ruins. Though she was weird, she was super rare and magnificent human resource. She added that she was not just investment story but she felt she should be considered as head hunting for new talent. Xiaoji felt this beauty could probably be false person as we did not know her true self. So Xiaoji asked the benefits of funding her research, and he was planning to get her to the store while actualizing the benefits. The magic items that she has pulled out earlier in the start can now be repaired by her. These were expensive because of the material and special tools costs around 2,000 gold coins after that is completed. So it was 20 million yens if they convert it. Xiaoji counted on Ogma and he received 1,000 god coins and the reaming after they received the finished product they would pay the remaining 1,000 gold coins. Sasha said she wanted 1,000 gold coins at the moment and that won't be a problem as she could cultivate the repaired items. She said that he has paid her enough money actually quite a bit. Xiaoji asked if he would finance her does he have to provide funds in abundance and he had a condition that he wanted her to be their employee of their store and her job was to create the magic items for the merchandise along with that she has to protect him as the owner. He would not mind if all the other time would be used for research. He wanted her to take the test on how efficient she could work as a bodyguard in few days. Sasha said she would lurk inside the ruins as an adventurer, rather than collecting research expenses by herself. It seems that those who work at his store where they could focus on research. Finally she accepts the terms of Xiaoji and they shook hands. Firstly she wanted to take bodyguard test and Xiaoji was looking forward to it. Several days later, on the road adjacent to the Forest of Dark Destruction, they traverse cautiously. 
The ominous atmosphere lingered as they advanced, wary of the looming shadows and mysterious sounds. All the three gathered and he asked her to do a preliminary survey to do a business in nearby village and we were going to test whether Sasha could fight an escort or not. As Xiaoji has heard that there were many monsters that suddenly attacked the village those were wanderer horses. Xiaoji sent Sensei to fight and she asked whether he was referring to her. Sasha's main job was researcher also she has some power of magic user. That was enough main would come to rescue in any kind of emergency. Xiaoji wanted to know if the wanderer horses were strong. Wanderer horses were ferocious monsters that crushes others enemies with the help of their logger hoof. It was C-ranked monster but it was difficult to escape from it as it chases of after him very quickly. In an open field like here they get converted to B-grade designation. So he understood that it was similar to that of bear that they fought earlier. It was the first magic user like magic users battle that he was going to witness and it would be a quite sight to watch that. She started with the presentation of her research on magic and it suddenly got cold and ground was frozen. There was ice fountain as Xiaoji and Main were watching her perform asked her if she was trying to freeze the ground and stop their feet but they were planning to jump over the ice and they were very fast and smart. Sasha with Xiaoji's financial support was able to repair one ancient magic item that was broken from the time of excavation and as she performed her magic with her re-magic item Ice Hell Princess the rate of freezing was doubled and the horses fell on the ground frozen. She asked them if they knew the re-magic item that she has repaired. Xiaoji asked her did she repair an ancient magic item so fast and Main felt that was such a magic and magic item combination. As the horses approached there was no way that they could escape, so Sasha finally used her last move to finish her presentation, and there appeared large amount of magic circles forming ice arrows. Now all the circles were lifted in air and attacked the horses and all of them fell in that pit. As Main asked a while ago that she would have hard time in an open field right. Sasha asked Xiaoji if she has passed the test, Xiaoji said yes of course, and demanded that he has to take care of her so this was from Akina's store, as they hired another great employee.